This is landscape architecture on a huge scale. So Lisa, where do you begin with a project of this size? It's a great question. So effectively, over 20 years ago in 1995, the client came to us with a brief uh, about wanting to create an Australian native botanic garden. And for us, it was about pulling together our key collaborators and working out, well, how do you showcase these things? And we wanted to make sure it wasn't a replication of the Australian landscape because that's not useful for anybody, yeah. um, but rather a sculptural and artistic interpretation of that. Basically, we've structured the visitor journey in terms of water. And so as you journey through the garden, you come from the arid absence of water and slowly the water starts to appear in the rock pool waterway and then becomes abundant further through the rest of the gardens. We had a lot of collaborators on our team and in this instance, we had an artist who actually came and designed this piece specifically for this purpose. And the water, as you can see, flows really gently all the way down through to the lake at the other end. And the kids just love to get in here and play around in it and explore the water elements. you must be really pleased with this. We're thrilled. I mean, we set the design as a, a, a really difficult task, 15 hectares, an old sand mine site, to turn into a, a garden that celebrates Australia's flora and landscape. And of course, not just about the large scale, you've also got these great display gardens. This is a series of gardens that really shows plants that you can get in nurseries and how to use them in creative new ways in, in Australian home gardens. And Paul, you brought your expertise in plant knowledge to this project. Yes, here we are at the, the weird and wonderful garden, where, which uh, the clever design way uh, with these huge big uh, stones, we have a lot of microclimates and uh, you've got places that are exceedingly hot and, and exceedingly cool. So we can grow things from the Northern Territory, Central Australia and the highlands in Tasmania and coastal Australia uh, as well. All one thing juxtaposed against another. So that makes it weird and it certainly makes it wonderful. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> This is a perfect example of how landscape architecture can combine beautiful artistic design with a scientific purpose to create something wonderful for everyone. One of the challenges of landscape architecture is its huge diversity. From multi-million dollar public projects to deeply personal private spaces. So where do you begin? Your own personal garden, when you were designing this, what was the one crucial element you wanted to make sure was in the garden? Family, heart and soul, family space, places for kids to play. But that doesn't just happen naturally, does no, it? No, no, it's very intentional. You've really got to work to make something look underworked. So we introduced some friends of ours that were landscape architects, collaborating with our building architect, and together we all came up with what we've got here today. We've just come through the wild kitty area, which I love, but now look at this structured pathway as we get closer to the house. It's amazing. Yes, I had the idea of running a very straight and solid path to the front door, and our landscape architects helped us develop this idea to make it more of a journey. The plants are amazing. I know it's an award-winning planted garden, but they look like they've been here forever. Yes, yeah, so well, that's part of the idea, to make it not look like uh, it's too structured and not overly landscaped, which is often what happens. The way that the house and the garden fit seamlessly together is just, it, it's amazing that there's no boundaries. No, no. Having a significant tree like this one definitely helps do that. It links the space you know, with vegetation. There's a lovely story behind it actually. 
We, our landscape architect suggested we had this deciduous tree here. I was about to go and plant it. I had the hole ready and everything. And I saw my young daughter looking out the window at what I was doing and I asked her to come out. And we got in there and got our hands dirty. And just as we were tapping down the soil, I said, we have to have a name. And without a thought, she came out with Charlie. <laughs> We've got this policy that you don't go and buy things to make more things, you've got to use what we've got lying around. And so kids have made things, Simone and I have made things. It's just been a part of the family process and a part of getting kids and ourselves out of the house and out into the garden. Peter and his team have done an amazing job here. A wonderfully welcoming family garden, but at the heart of that is really strong design. And a little dash of fun! <laughs>